Now, do you find yourself going to work every day and doing your job without even thinking about it? Well, you're not alone. It's estimated that more than 80% of employees spend the majority of their waking time on autopilot. So, how do you get out of that mindset and shake up your thought process? Well, I can't be on autopilot doing this programme, I can tell you, but Chris Perez brown is here to talk about how, perhaps in other environments, people are on autopilot all the time. Chris, how do you shake yourself out of it? Well, very simply, it's all about breaking habits. We've all had that experience of driving a long distance, arriving at the destination, and not remembering large chunks of the journey, and, and that's largely because we're trying to save energy. So. Our conscious brain um, is, is like a gas-guzzling V8, so we try and switch to the more efficient Tesla-like subconscious. <laughs> and the way we do that, very simply, is we look around us and we say, have I seen something like this before? And if I have, I assume it's exactly the same as last time and therefore behave in the same way. So we need to go on autopilot to preserve our sanity, Absolutely. really. Absolutely. We'd fry without it. We'd fry without it. The problem with it is that over time it starts to take over more of our life because obviously when autopilot's running the show, it chooses what it knows, what it's seen before. And obviously, you know, that's great for saving energy, but it's not very good for us stepping back from the busyness, the work in which we do, and, and really asking the question, what's needed here? Steve Wozniak, ladies and gentlemen. So, it's great to have you here. You are, um, I think everyone believes you are an American icon. You've done so much to help people with personal computing. You've changed the lives of the planet and the way we communicate. Um, looking at, at your history, you were obviously a real visionary. You knew where you wanted to go. You have a massive passion for what you did. How do you translate the vision and the passion into action and making stuff happen? <laughs> now, in my case, for the important things I did, the vision was almost accidental. It was visions of things that I wanted for myself to kind of be a little bit of a superhero if I had my own computer. And it was hardly a vision for where computers are going. Though I did read that we were creatures of habit and we enjoy that. And we like the comfort of doing the same things every day. Are you saying break away from that to become more individual or become more interesting or stimulated? I think you're absolutely right, Steve. We do love our habits and we need our habits. If we did new things all the time every day, we would be exhausted. The question is how much do we behave in habitual patterns and how much does autopilot take over? So the latest research is suggesting that about 80% of our life is on autopilot. And what tends to happen is it tends to increase as time goes on because as long as we're on autopilot, we always choose old habits. Therefore, it creeps more into our life. So I'm not suggesting we go from 80% to zero. Right. But I'm <laughs> suggesting that if we're more deliberate, we can get it down to maybe 75. 75 is the optimum amount, yeah? Well, I don't know. There's no science on this. But does but it vary from person to person? I imagine some people are more habituated. From my experience, it would suggest so. Good word, by the way. Can I write that down? <laughs> Please do. Habituated. <laughs> <laughs> and some yeah. people have jobs where they can be on autopilot longer than others, presumably. Well, some of them actually almost need to be on autopilot to kind of keep them going. But it's not only about Chris, um, what advice would you give to somebody who wants to thrive? Uh, good question. So, um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot in there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I think one of the, the most important things for us to do is to kind of break out from this kind of autopilot life that, yeah. that we're all leading. So, um, so many people. Um, they, they, they wake up in the morning, next time they're conscious, they're back in bed because life has just happened to them. Mm -hmm. And I think we've all had that experience when we drive a long distance in a car and we arrive and we can't remember it. Yeah. Well, it happens to all of us, you know, every day. The more we can break out of that, get conscious of who we are, the life we're leading, and make more deliberate decisions about how we want to be, I think the better our lives will be. So yeah. let's not get swept away with social media, you know. Yeah. Let's not just be busy for the sake of it because I know it just feels good. But actually, it might not be the best use of our time and our talents. So, so you know, wake up, be more conscious. Yeah. Okay. I would, Mindfulness. I would say um, to add to that, you know, don't. It, it's I'm so easy sometimes to sort of like look. Social media is, you know, terrible for this. You, if you look at other people's sort of successes, and you sort of gauge yours, where you are, where you're starting, if you're a musician, a writer, whatever you are, and then you're sort of admiring someone whose successes are probably 10, 15 years longer than yours. It's really hard to mm. gauge that. It's really, it's hard, not, you want to be inspired by this, but it's hard to sort of see yourself. I've spent almost 20 years now helping the biggest businesses in the world get better at creativity. 
And what I've noticed is that it's very hard to do that unless you help people show up with the right energy. So we've all had the experience of driving a long distance in a car and then arriving at the destination not remembering large chunks of the journey. That basically happens because our conscious brain takes loads of energy. Uh, it's a V8 gas guzzling machine, basically. And um, when we're using that, we tire quickly. So we've all experienced that, I think, when we've learned a new language or a new skill or taken up an instrument. So actually, we can't use conscious thinking for much of our day because otherwise we'd be exhausted. So what tends to happen is we save the energy by getting our subconscious to take over when things look familiar. So the way it does it is it says, if I'm looking at something today and it looks like it's something I've experienced before, I'm assume they're the same. So you get in your car, you sit behind the wheel, you go, I've seen this before, subconscious can take over. You get to your destination safely and all's good. Now, um, that's basically the experience of living on autopilot. Now, we know it happens when we drive, but the truth is it happens to us every day when we're doing anything habitual. So when we go to work, when we're with our loved ones, when we're living our lives. A lot of the stuff we're doing, we're not particularly conscious of, we're not that sensitized to. And therefore, we can't ask the question, what's needed here? What can I do today that is about the unique context of now. So Wake Up is all about helping people learn how to get off autopilot when the time is right. Yeah. Um, so, so for years I've been helping uh, leaders, I suppose, get not just more creative, but more conscious. Mm -hmm. So they act more deliberately <laughs> with their time and their talents. Yeah. Um, and, th and that's really where a lot of this inspiration has come from. And as time's gone on, and I've spent more time talking to them about it and, and, and helping them become more aware, mm -hmm. I've realised the value of it, yeah. I suppose. And then I've just had some really, really fun chats with people where they've said something and I've just gone, do you know what, that's genius, that's a breakthrough. So, for example, I was, um, I was at a wedding, um, a friend of mine's wedding, who um, is a cold water surf company down in Cornwall, finished yeah. there, lovely, lovely bunch. And he was getting married, and one of his, the guy who ran his marketing, he's got this amazing sparkle in his eyes, just got more energy than most mm -hmm. people that you meet. And, um, and over the wedding, I was just like, Look, come on, Ernie, what's your secret? What is it <laughs> about you that when you come in the room, everyone just fizzles a little bit more mm -hmm. and they, they pay a bit more attention? And he said, well, you know, I look after myself a bit. And, da -da -da, and I go, come on, Ernie, give me a bit more. Yeah. And he said, well, I've got one thing I do, and it, it's, a, it's a bit weird. <laughs> and I was in the mood for weird, so I was like, well, bring it on. And he said, well, every time I go to the loo, I do 20 press-ups. <laughs> And I'm like, that's a bit weird. Yeah. He was very keen to point out, not in the loo, by the way. So uh, clear, clear on that. It was the time that was important, not the place. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so why does that help? And he said, well, two things. Number one, you know, I'm, I'm quite fit and he is ripped and he never goes to the gym. So nice tick. But number two, what he finds is when he does 20 press-ups mm -hmm. is he just gets more blood pumping around his system, gets more oxygen into his brain. So therefore he, he can guarantee every hour or so he just gives himself a little boost. And afterwards, he can then just say, right, what am I doing now? Am I doing the right stuff? Am I using my talents in the right way? And it just, it just struck me that there's a lot of people out there who've got these little things that they do that might seem slightly strange. Mm. But actually, if we tried them out and look what worked for us, we may wake up a little bit more ourselves. So for you, which is your favorite experiment? Um, I think, well, actually, I've probably got a couple. One um, which works every single time I do it is I spend 10 minutes outside each day. Oh, that's mine it's, as it's well. Yours. It's a winner. It's a winner. I, I, so what you do, so I mean, I know that sounds really, really mad. So you go outside the first, and it's when it's light. So that can be, I mean, especially as it's just got dark. Um, so to, to go and do that is a, quite a big commitment. Yeah. But um, we just, we've just got a second-hand company recently. So I've been going in creeping my way through the thing, going lying, literally, I think my neighbours think I'm a bit insane, <laughs> but lying on the trampoline with the first with my cup of coffee and I've got like a, yeah. one of those big woolly sleep suits and I go and lie on it for 10 minutes and it's love fantastic. It. It's love really, I love that. It works really well, so you don't have any phones, there's no digital yeah. distractions. Yeah. But what I find is it's really good for me just to remember who I am, where I am, Yeah. what's important. I don't just head into the day with busyness, I actually then go into yeah. the day with intention. Yes. <clears throat> Which, you know, I think if you start that way, you've got a good chance yeah. to come back as you go through it. So I love that one.